back for the review with Kyle. We've had his fan cam, um, so let's get the nitty gritty of it all. Uh, starting with the, the team lineup, I was actually pleasantly pleased with what we saw. Like Mankiw was the only change for Dummett from the Manchester United game. You were out there. Man United game. Were you happy with the starting eleven? I was. I looked at the team sheet and I thought that's good enough to win the game, definitely. I was really happy with the team. I was thinking, right, that finally, because I thought Jostler would sneak back into the team, but they started Mutu, which I was really happy with, so I had no complaints with the with the starting eleven. I didn't. No, neither did I. I think we needed to start Mutu and Perez up front. It worked really well against Man United. Um, just wanted to see, see Kennedy and Richie get more of the ball and drive the team forward. Um, going into the game, with Perez has a big chance first on in the early, uh, early on in the first half. He gets played for after Brighton mess around with it at the back. Is that a costly error? And we, do we see this more and more times from Perez where he gets one big chance and then he wastes it? Like I'm not talking about just this season in particular, but you'll... Well, he's done it a couple of yeah. times this season, and he? he did it at uh, Palacy. They tackled the defender at Palacy, runs and he just puts it straight at the keeper. And he did it again the day. It's just, just, it's just lack of composure, isn't it? Just lack of... Like, just like of being able to take the ball on and just smash it in the top corner or some whatever. Yeah, I think like we say, we had Shelby had a chance as well, uh, where it went horribly over the top. Kennedy had a chance where he had a shot just over the crossbar. But their goal, which obviously is going to... What gonna... I would say though is, when Murray got injured, we had a good, before then, we had a good bit of momentum. Oh, did, yeah, like, definitely. Him, him getting injured, I hope he's alright. Yeah, like, definitely. First and foremost, I hope he's alright. Because it did look bad. Like, before, like, before then, we, we had momentum, we looked like we were going to do something, and then he got injured, it stopped for 10 minutes, and we just looked flat, and we didn't pick up after it. I think that was probably the perfect time for Brighton to kind of get a bit of a stranglehold in the game, yeah. and they get the goal. I think the first thing, I think you touched on in your fan cam, was it even a corner in the first place? It, it, it seemed, it, it seemed it like it was a goal a kick. Like, the, the, the lad hit, it hits off the lad's chest, Brighton player, no Newcastle players around him. So for him to give a corner... No Brighton players either. Absolute daft, man. But it's Andre Marin, I put a post on Facebook, beware, Andre Mariner's referee, something's going to happen. And obviously he gives a corner away. Obviously, I don't blame the full performance on Andre Mariner because we were terrible, but like... Every time he comes up here, yeah, there's something. something yeah, always something with him. So from that result in corner, it doesn't get cleared properly, and the guy has uh, the shot on the edge of the box. It seems to take a slight deflection and go in. Definitely took a deflection. Um, it just looked, it was, just, it seemed unfortunate at the time because I thought we were the better team. But when you're at the bottom and now goes your way, it's one of them. Definitely, when you're right at the bottom and nothing goes your way. Well, let's see what Rafa has to say about that. It's difficult to explain when you have lost some games. You come here and you have uh, sixty-eight percent of possession. That uh, everybody was talking about the possession in the past that we didn't have. We had the possession. We have twenty-seven attempts. I think it was ten corners or uh, free kicks, whatever. So we were uh, controlling the game. We were creating chances, and we didn't score. They have one shot no, uh, on target, and we had deflection, and they score. And then you lose a game that you deserve to win, and you deserve to get three points, but. Uh, OK, that is what we have, and all we have to be sure is that um, the next time we take our chances and it will be a totally different game. So, bottom of the table, we talk about three uh, big games against Southampton away next week. Uh, they're going to point today, another po good point for them away from home. We've got Watford and Bournemouth coming, in up, uh, coming up. Have we got a look from now to maybe the Liverpool game? I know that it's a long, long way, a long, long way until we play Liverpool on Boxing Day, but we haven't got a top six item until we play Liverpool. Have we got to be looking at the roundabout, say, 17, a 20 point mark by the time Liverpool comes along? Well, these games are huge. We needed to win the day. Like, we've been saying, like, in the build up, oh, we've had the big teams, we've got an excuse to be down here, but, like, we've been beat up Brighton at home. Wake up. Like, because that, it, it's starting to become a realisation for me that. We could well get relegated. Like, Have we run out of excuses a little bit? You could say that. We could say we've run out of excuses, but at the end of the day, didn't get the investment in the summer, did he? Just didn't get it. Like, at the end of the day, we just didn't get the investment we needed. Like, we still need a centre forward. Like, Rondon's injured. Poor Mutu, like, poor Perez, like, there's just. You look at that bench today. I'm going to, if I remember it, I'll, I'll see if I can. Darlow, Mankio. Shaw, Hayden, Atsu, uh, Hosselu, Murphy, are they going to keep you up in the Premier League? 
Well, if well, it sums up the crowd reaction when they brought Jocelyn on for Mutu. They booed it. At the end of the day, it's just not a. a none of them really. When they come on the they come onto the field, you don't feel enthusiastic. Oh, he's going to be the one that's going to take the game by the the balls. But he didn't. He just none of them can. Like at the end of the day, they're just the squad players, aren't they? We've got no one that can really come off the bench and be like, we're going to take the game to Brighton. Are we? Let's get three points. But. You look at the second half in particular, the first 15, 20 minutes, two banks of four from Brighton. You knew exactly what they were going to do. They were going to defend their goal, um, their goal, their goal advantage. We couldn't break them down. And when you bring somebody on, you're thinking, well, maybe they're, maybe they're the right person to bring on and try and break the dead, break our deadlock in a sense. Why did we not invest more, Kyle? I think that's the bottom line. We, we've had protests. We've had this. We've had this sat and the other. We've had protests every single game. What, why can you think of any reason why Mike Ashley could have gone to Rafa Benitez that we shouldn't be investing more money in this football club? You know, it is. It'll, Mike Ashley will invest in January when we're bottom of the league and then when we get relegated, it'll be too little too late and we'll be sitting here in a couple of months' time and saying, will he invest it in January but should he invest it in the summer? Yes, you should have, but at the end of the day, it's down to one man and as says me fan cam, these protests should be, should double now because we're getting behind the team and it's not working anymore. The unity's not there that it that once was last season. So I urge fans, I urge the Magpie group to arrange some sort of protest in terms of a walkout. Remember Cardiff a couple of years ago where we walked out 70 minutes or even a protest like the Spurs game. I urge, I urge the Magpie group to really arrange some because if you were to do something like that, I'd get behind it. And I know many other Geordies that were there today would also. It seems to have to be bigger. I think when you look at the the protest before the game this afternoon, I walked past it about half past two. It was very quiet. I have to be brutally honest, it was very, very quiet. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing um, that the Magpie group have done, but we need. I think it needs a bigger, bigger scale. And I totally agree. I think if you're going to do something, a walkout probably is the best thing we've got next. I think we've got to show in the ground and the millions of TV cameras, and millions of people around the world that we need to do something. Final point, Kyle, when you look at today and uh, we look at all the negativity, is there any positivities to take from today's performance? Because we've got, we've got a, tough, a, tough, a tough couple of weeks. We need to really need to find some sort of positive to take forward. There's, there's no positives, honestly. I, I wish I wish I could say, oh, there's a positive yard, but there's not. We got beat at home off Brighton, man. And they're, and they're singing at the end, we're winning away. How bad must you be? We won away. Brighton cannot win anything away from home, but they beat Newcastle. We're that bad. Like, Brighton are bad, but we're worse. Like, what positive can you take, man? It's like, it's just, we're sitting for a long old season, mate. That's the way it is. Like, with the way the Ashley invested in the summer, or the lack of investment, we, we're the ones that have to suffer, that's, it. that's the way it is. You raise the ticket prices, you raise the kit prices, and you buy no one, and we're bottom of the league, with no hope, what seems no hope, it's just long old season, long old season. A very tough afternoon at St James's Park, get your comments in below, um, and we'll see you next week. Thanks very much.